Good morning. Good morning. All you saints on this All Saints Day, uh, November 1st, uh, are there any announcements that should come from the congregation? I yes. have an announcement. Uh, we are finding ourselves short of volunteers at the food shelf now and the thrift shop as well with uh, Mike and Donna moving. Just left a big hole. So if anybody would like to volunteer in any way for the thrift shop or the food shelf, let me know. Okay. Did everybody hear that okay? All right. Is there anything else? Uh, just a couple of things. Have you noticed the protocol coming into the church? Uh, this is the way we have the church set up is based on the uh, state and the CDC guidelines. Um, we are trying to be as safe as we can uh, with this pandemic still kind of raging on out there. Um, and so we're going to have services uh, probably twice a month for a while to see how everything goes. So the next time we meet will be on November 15th. Uh, and that's the next time we're going to meet for a worship service. I will continue to do the taping of the services. Uh, and then next week, uh, I'll do a communion service virtually. I'm going to do the, uh, all the communion services for the time being virtually. So we really don't have to touch elements or anything like that. And the uh, collection plates are at the back of the church. So when you leave, uh, you can... Uh, you know, put your money in as you leave. We're not going to pass the uh, the plates like we normally do. There'll be uh, no passing of peace, no coffee hour, of course. And then when the service is all over, I would ask you to please just go out the other way and try to keep yourself socially distanced. Um, and so kind of like one at a time down the stairs until you get outside. Uh, that would be, uh, I would appreciate that. If there's nothing else, let us be in a moment of prayer. God of gentle, loving guidance, who brought the Israelites into a new land, filled with new hope and promise, be with us today, opening our hearts and spirits to an awareness of your abiding love and presence with us. Help us to place our trust solely in you, for we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And would you please join me to our responsive call to worship, which is in your bulletin. Give thanks to God, for God is good. God, is good. God has come to God's people with blessings and hope. Praise Amen. Amen. And now God will lead us in our uh, children's story. I think I can take this off. You want to get back here and take it off? I think that's probably fine. My voice isn't quite as loud. <laughs> so, it's good to see all of you guys. I thought about turning the camera around, but I wasn't sure if everybody wanted to be on camera. So, um, so do you know the song, If You're Happy and You Know It, Clap Your Hands? If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. Well, how do we know when we're happy? The Bible talks about happiness a lot. And in today's Bible reading, Jesus is going to talk about some things that make us happy. But as Jesus does, his ideas are sometimes a little bit different than what we might think. So Jesus doesn't say that we're happy if we have lots of money. And he doesn't say we're happy if Santa brings everything on our list. Jesus says we're happy when we're kind to other people. And we're happy when we try to bring peace to God's world. And we're happy when we love God. So how do we know if we're happy? Well, I'm thinking the next time you do something kind for a person, take a minute and think about how you feel right at that minute. 
and you will feel that happiness that God is talking about. And it's a different kind of happiness than you feel when, on Christmas morning. So I think if we can try to remember when we do nice things or we do something that we know Jesus wants us to do, and we stop and feel how we feel, then we will feel that happiness that God gives us. And we'll know we're happy, and our faces will surely show it. I make sure I social the distance. <laughs> <laughs> Our first scripture reading this morning is from 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that they did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What, we will, what we, will we be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him. For we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Now we have a couple of hymns that we're going to put on the speaker. And you can see the words are in the bulletin. I ask you that if you're going to, if you want to kind of sing the hymns, sing them to yourself, because uh, we're not supposed to sing, but I wanted to add a couple of hymns into the service. And so Donna's going to play the music, and the words are uh, in your bulletin, and the first hymn is We Gather Together. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. 
Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And this ends our scripture readings for this morning. Well, first of all, it's nice to see some people uh, to worship with this morning because usually I'm just looking at that camera right there. And boy, does that get old after a while. It's nice to see uh, at least eyes. <laughs> You know, I would like for us to focus this morning on Jesus' Beatitudes and All Saints Day. Now this year, this special day, falls just a few short days before the conclusion of a bitterly fought election season. And as we enter the long season of winter, we are beginning to worry again about the surges we see in the pandemic, including right here in Vermont. You know, you will notice something in this passage. The list of those who are blessed does not align even remotely with what we usually think of when we think of people who are blessed. This passage says those who are blessed are the ones who are mourning, or are humble, or extend mercy rather than ex exact revenge, or strive for peace rather than extend their will through violence, just to name a few. Now Jesus calls many conditions we seek to avoid blessed. In addition, many of us tend to associate, I think, blessings in largely material terms. In Jesus' words, stretch our imagination to see God present and at work in so many other ways, often countercultural ways, particularly in our service to the other. So how are we saints? Yes, you all sitting out there this morning, if you didn't know it, you're saints. How are we saints going to be put put the Beatitudes into practice in this world that we live in. And in, it is, in every way I think right now, it's a hard, hard world to live in, in a lot of ways. I think Jesus is inviting us to imagine what it might be like to live in the kingdom of God. For things don't follow our ideas of normal. And by inviting that imagination to draw a sharp contrast between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of the world. And challenging our often unconscious allegiances to the latter. You know, Jesus says this morning, Jesus claims that the poor the mournful, the meek, the hungry, the pure-hearted, the peaceful, and the persecuted are blessed. I'm not sure that's the way our world we live in sees it. Because I think the world we live in would say that the blessed might be the loudest, strongest, wealthiest, and most privileged people. We live in a world where we look out at it and see it, where we can see greed and selfishness seems to uh, pay dividends to those people. While meekness and mercy and mournfulness often get a little more than contempt. We live in a world where many care more about seeing their own ease and comfort has the right, and, well, I think they
they say to themselves, the rest of the world, who cares? You know, if I was to take one word in this gospel this morning to say, uh, that, that were to say something about Jesus' sermon, what he's trying to really say to us, is I think that word is transformation. We are invited to transform our sense of where God is actually at work in this world. Not simply or even primarily in places of strength, but in places of vulnerability, amid our grief, alongside those who exercise mercy and work for righteousness, in so many other activities that the world considers to be not just not meek, but I think they think weak. The God we know in Jesus always shows up where we least expect God to be. Among the poor and the destitute, rather than necessarily the rich and the powerful. God shows up in our acts of sacrifice and mercy, rather than through assertions of will and attempts to collect worldly power and goods. You know, even the smallest gesture in a world where I think an eye for an eye still reigns, or working for justice in a world where injustice rages on, are, are precisely the places where God is at work blessing and sustaining and supporting God's beloved children in the world. You see, there are no small gestures. And we are reminded, I think, in this passage this morning, that when we do something out of love for another, it's not a small thing. That's not how God looks at that. God looks at that as just as big as anything else, that small act of kindness. You know, Jesus' blessings that we heard this morning will sound ludicrous to those who refuse to feel so deeply right here in their heart. Those who don't take time, don't even take the time to humble themselves long enough to see that those people, you know, quote, those other people, who I think I might be superior to in every way, according to Jesus, they are actually the people that can teach us everything. They are the ones, Jesus says, who receive God's blessings. Frederick Buckner, who's a the theologian, puts it this way. He writes this. The world says, mind your own business. And Jesus says, there is no such thing as your own business. The world says, follow the wisest course and be a success. And Jesus says, follow me and be crucified. The world says drive carefully. The life you save may be your own. And Jesus says, whoever would save his life and lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. The world says law and order. And Jesus says love. The world says get. And Jesus says Give. Given where we are right now, on this day, in this world, and knowing that so many people in this world and in our country are grieving untold losses of loved ones from the pandemic, as well as all the other usual causes of livelihoods, of hope, of confidence, about the future, perhaps we can anchor ourselves both in the invitation and command to live according to God's kingdom ethic, but also, and perhaps even more, to allow God 
kingdom promises to transform our thoughts, our words, our deeds on this All Saints Sunday in August. Knowing that we are joined to all the saints across the centuries by the grace of God we know in Jesus. And as we remember and honor those who have gone before us, we celebrate the past, the present, and the future. We can draw comfort in the fact that countless others have mourned, hungered, thirsted, and grieved in years past, and gone on from their struggles to the fullness of life in God's presence. Amen. Father, we lifted many names and situations to you this morning. Remind us that we too, everyone here, are the recipients of that same healing love that you share with all your people. We ask that you strengthen us, you walk with us, and you lift us high and give us confidence to go out into the world and be in service to all your people. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father,
As you leave this morning, leave knowing that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit both with you. Amen.